Hello there, YouTube. This is Wilson Bits back at it again with some um, Sit Down Saturday for Inkbound. Um, we're starting out in combat here simply because, as always, I'm going to try my best to explain things simply at first, like just in case people don't know exactly how um, the topic works in general, uh, so that you have all the information, and then we'll go into more of the in-depth stuff. So the reason why we're in combat here is because today we are talking about power orbs and exactly the power associated and why they're in, I think that, why I pick Will Thief all the time. So, we're in combat here. We have two different orbs. This power orb is what power orbs look like normally. And after a turn, they'll start to look like this power orb up here, where it's sparking, it's looking a little bit more erratic, there's more like bubbles coming off of it. Mainly that sparking is what you're looking for, but if you can like count the frequency of the pulses, the frequency of the bubbles coming off of it, or like the arc of the the radiation and like how erratic that is, then that's a good way to see that this power orb has one turn left. Uh, anyways. Whenever you pick up an orb, you will gain one will, and all your cooldowns will be reduced by one. And so we'll show that here with, uh, just go ahead and pick this up here. And you can see all of my cooldowns have been reduced by one, and now I have three will. So this is very useful because it means that um, technically, you have five will per turn on an average turn, right? And your cooldowns are actually around half of what they're actually listed at because you produce baseline one orb per turn. So this leaping strike, if I use it and then pick up an orb, it goes down to one cooldown. Or if I already have used my orb and I use it, next turn the cooldown's at one as it was uh, this turn. So then I pick up an orb and now I can use this every single turn, which is quite useful. Uh, another thing that I want to note while we're here is that there are, like, if you are within a certain radius of an orb when you pick it up, you will not use movement, or you will not use will to pick it up. See, if I leave this uh, free, like, say, I call it the wiggle radius, then we're not using any will whatsoever. And you might hear the beeping that it's uh, doing as I'm wiggling around like a little madman. I'm gonna just like play that off for you guys a bit there. It, it's a little, like it's not exactly high frequency. And not to make it weird, but um, I have high frequency hearing loss and I'm able to hear it, but I understand that some people may not be able to hear that. So visually, you can see that the color is like a light blue. When you get into range, it turns into a like, I don't know what to call that, like a teal, a green. Now, if you have high frequency hearing loss and you're colorblind, then I'm sorry, I don't know what, what that they can do about that. I have suggested it. I'll probably suggest it again now that it came up. So if I were to grab the orb here, I will not use movement, or I will not use will, and I'll just gain one there. So, that's kind of the important bit there, and we're going to cut now over to a spreadsheet where I have like a thing up that'll help me explain a little bit more about exactly like how powerful these power orbs are. Okay, so this spreadsheet is a little bit more um, bare bones than some of the other ones that we've been using, but um, should hopefully be able to get my point across. So as I dis uh, discussed earlier, a power orb will reduce all your cooldowns by one, and that's important because you're able to use skills more often. And so what a lot of people may not necessarily look at it as is they may look at it as okay well i'm getting plus one will so that means that i get to use another action 
Uh, generally speaking, although it's not always the case, depending on your current build and which class that you're playing, uh, picking up an orb and gaining one will is usually worth, let's say around 50 will is where I have it at. And the point being is that picking up a power orb will not remove all of your cooldowns. So on most turns, it's going to mean that you're going to auto attack once. Now, nobody's auto attack does 50 damage, and so that's kind of how I've averaged it out. Um, technically, the best auto attacks uh, just at a baseline is Moss Cloak and Magma Miner at 35, but Magma Miner has heat, so he does a little bit more than everybody. Moss Cloak by crit. And then you have characters like, um, say, Clairvoyant, who only has a one cooldown on their pulse, so every time you pick up an orb, you get to pulse, and so that's worth more damage than most other characters. But uh, you also might get a skill that's off cooldown, and so that's why I pretty much put it at about 50, even though that may not necessarily be the case every single time. It's usually going to be less than 50. But if you look at your overall damage per turn on some of the drafted bindings, then you get to see more so like how much damage that you're actually gaining. So over here on the left, over here, we have Cleave, which is a two cost, eight cooldown skill. Eight cooldown is a lot. So at first we're going to simulate us dealing uh, damage using absolutely no orbs. So on turn one, our cooldown is zero. We're able to use this skill. So we do 200 damage and apply five, apply five bleed, which then does 50 damage every single turn and does not degrade. So then, even when it's on cooldown, Cleave is actually dealing damage, like technically. And so by the time that it comes off cooldown and you have it available on turn 8, then you have dealt a total of 600 damage across 8 turns, which comes out to about, um, we're just going to wing it out there, about like 75 damage per turn, right? That may not necessarily be the exact number, but it's about 75 damage per turn, which sounds pretty good. But if you're utilizing orbs, right? So as I said, your cooldown's actually going down by two per turn because at the start of your turn, you're going to reduce your cooldowns by one. And then if you pick up an orb, your cooldown's reduced by one. Again, cooldown is zero at, the tur at turn one. So you go ahead and you use it, deal 250 damage. You pick up your orb. So at the start of turn two, cooldown is six. And then it goes down to four to two. And then on the fifth turn, you're able to use this skill again, apply another 200 damage, another five bleeds. So now your bleed's doing 100 damage per stack. And then so in the same amount of time, you're actually dealing like uh, 1,000 damage in total. Now, you might say, okay, what exactly is the fight that's going to last this long? That's a good question. <laughs> it is a good question. But it's also important to then uh, state that uh, at turn 5 here, where we, where we use Cleave again, we have already dealt as much damage as we would normally have if we were not using orbs. And in turn, using orbs just for Cleave has increased Cleave's damage by around 55, 55 to 60%. Because we're doing more damage or we're doing damage sooner which is very important in inkbound because there's a lot of things that scale over time like bosses you've got creeping blight coming in at you uh, especially at the higher difficulties where it starts sooner it does more damage applies a debuff for the entire rest of the run you'd prefer not to have it right so orbs are actually providing way more than just necessarily 50 damage a turn over the course of all your turns at an aggregate because it's going to enable you to use cleave more often it's going to enable you to use say after image more often this is just uh one example that we've chosen here so you might be saying okay well cleave uh doesn't degrade so that makes it a little bit better for these things right no not at all the other dot skills also benefit greatly from the cooldown of orbs. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at Incendiary. Incendiary is a one cost three cooldown skill 
that will apply deal 50 damage, apply 5 burn. And so I've had to add another column here just to help track exactly where the burn is. And so then it just calculates, you know, burn stacks times 10 plus 50 if I've used the skill that turn. And so it's basically the same thing. On turn 1, it has no cooldown, so we go ahead and we use it. Enemies have 5 burn, so it deals a total of 100 damage. And it keeps going. I don't think of that I need to explain this, but we're, here, we're going through 3 rotations or 9 turns. And we deal a total of 750 damage. Now this one looks a bit wonky, because with the cooldown of 3, it gets a little bit finicky. And that's because, well... Well, let me put it this way. It's between being able to use it every turn and every other turn. Because, right, it's not two cooldown. It's not four cooldown. It's somewhere in between. And so these shaded cells are just when I'm able to use incendiary in the best situation. Because, it again, it gets very complicated. Still tracking exactly how much burn we got. And over the course of the same time, we are dealing almost 1500 damage which is literally almost double so burn actually benefits more from orbs than bleed does despite the fact that bleed doesn't decay and that's primarily because due to the lower cooldown of incendiary as a base we're able to use it more so the more that you're reducing your cooldowns the more orbs you're getting all of this stuff just makes skills just deal more damage or more damage per turn more accurately that's pretty much what i'm trying to get across here is that orbs are very important right although i value a single will at about around 50 damage the cooldown reduction is where honestly all the power comes in from the orbs this isn't even taking into account any vestiges that you might have that play off of orbs like the beads, bead of ivy, bead of flame, providing single target damage for you. Um, shining circlet, reducing the cooldown of the highest skill by one, which is like, <laughs> right? Like that would significantly increase your damage per turn off cleave. And all of these things are also like very common. They're only green vestiges, so they can even appear as early as the Sea of Ink. And they incentivize you to be picking up more orbs because orbs are now even better than they were before. Another thing is, is that it, they provide positioning, right? Because I was, uh, in the gameplay example, I was able to wiggle up like just barely and get the orb for free. But I could have used all of my free movement, picked up the orb, and then you get something like two to three free movement, which can honestly lead up to a big deal and allow you to escape an AoE while constantly using your skills along the way. Will Thief is one of the is a book mod that occurs much later in the uh, the rankings and what it does is it says every time that you pick up an orb you get a debuff that makes you have one less will reserve the next turn and it does stack so if you were to pick up four orbs you'd be pretty much like stranded with no will the next turn. And a lot of people seem to be averse to this book mod for some reason. And I honestly think that it's like free money because for whatever reason, because it doesn't get picked, it's worth 350 quillings, whereas most other mods are worth like around 100. So you get around 250 extra quillings just for going into Will Thief. Now, I'm not saying that it's a zero integer, like, modifier, but so long as you're picking up your orbs every turn, which you should be trying to do anyways, you're actually, you're only losing one will after the first turn, and as I said before, I value one will at about, like, 50 damage, but, but losing the cooldown on the orbs would be worth more than just ignoring the mod entirely. So, I pick it almost every single time. Obviously, there's situations where it's not good, and there's situations where they spawn your orb all the way over in, in nowhere, 
and it's just not good at all. Or the fact that it prevents you from actually building into, like, say, random orbs, like on Magma Miner. You can't really do Orbonk and then get away with having four orbs one turn and then not having any guaranteed orbs the next. Again, a lot of people are averse to it, but I honestly don't think that it's that bad. I've certainly had situations where having Will Thief has severely impacted my run, but usually that's due to you, my mistakes and my usual orb mismanagement, or just not using my resources correctly. I don't I honestly think it has less impact on a run as, say, something like Shimmering Barricade, which a lot of people think is very free. So, Shimmering Barricade is a mod that says that Guardians and Villains, every other turn, get an, a shield equal to 8% of their maximum health. Now, just going off of the first book, uh, Guardian alone, what that's generally going to do is that's going to give... Like, let's say, Giannis, or no, Rinferno, who normally has 15,000 health. He's going to get a shield for, well, I mean, let's just go ahead and, uh, all right. So I went ahead and mapped it. And so if it's giving 8% of their maximum life, every turn is a shield, or every other turn is a shield, then you're going to have on Renferno who has 1500 HP at Inkbound, he is going to get a 120 HP shield. This is worth around 2 to 3 will. So in one fight out of 10 in the game, you are going to lose 2 will every other turn. And when you have Will Thief, you're technically losing 1 will every turn after the first. So you might lose 2 will in a normal combat, three will, in a hard combat. And then, of course, depending on exactly how long your boss battles are going, you may or may not will lose more will there. But depending on how long your boss battles are going, you're going to lose more will in... Um, what am I trying to say? You're going to lose more will as you go on as well. Now, obviously, as you go on in the game, that 50... Base damage, basically, for every will is going to be worth more because you're going to have, like, say, ability power. You're going to have all those types of things. So one will starts to be worth a little bit more than just 50 damage. But also, as the game goes on, enemies progressively scale more health. So I still sort of relate it to about the same. So obviously, in the book two boss, this is going to be worth more and against the villains is going to be worth more. And people generally consider Shimmering Barricade an easy mod. Same thing with uh, Final Chapters. Final Chapters is honestly probably the easiest, so long as you just don't take damage. Something like uh, Heavy Pockets is certainly easier. But I think for the amount of quillings that you get, Will Thief is really not that bad, in my opinion. Hopefully I was able to, uh, I don't know, maybe convince some of you guys to try it out. Maybe uh, taught some people about orbs. If you thought that the talk was uh, educational or at least entertaining, be sure to leave a comment down below about that. If you have any topics like going forward that you'd like to hear about, be sure to leave those down in the comments below. And as always, if you have any other sorts of feedback, be it comments, questions, concerns, misplay alerts, be sure to put that down in the comments below as well. And until next time, I'll catch you guys around.